Get more out of your mornings with Dan Manarino. I mean, that just wakes you up. Hazel Sanchez. I'm feeling it. And meteorologist Byron Miranda. Now an hour earlier at 6 a.m. There you go. We get excited. <laughs> Weekdays on the PIX11 Morning News. Vaccines have officially been approved for children as young as six months. Tonight, we asked New York City parents how they feel about it. The PIX11 News at 10 straight ahead. Right now, kids as young as six months have been approved to get the COVID vaccine. A third person has been found dead in a Queens fire. And thousands enjoyed the Bronx Pride Parade today. The PIX11 News at 10 is next. Get your game on now. The Amazons continue the fight against the Marlins. Mets, Marlins, tomorrow at 1.30 on PIX11, New York's very own. Live from 42nd and 2nd, this is New York's very own PIX11 News at 10. For the first time in the fight against coronavirus, parents with children as young as six months old now have the option of getting their babies vaccinated. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kadi Tong. Health experts say this move by the CDC and the FDA makes the vaccine available to some 20 million children ages six months to five years. Pixlam and Steve Kuj is live for us right now in Mott Haven with more on how this would work and what parents think about it. Hi there, Steve. Good evening to you, Caddy. This is happening very, very fast. In just a matter of days, we're going to be seeing clinics and hospitals around the country, including hospitals like this one right here in the Bronx, having access to these children's COVID-19 vaccines. Again, this affecting children as young as six months old, so not even a full year. Very, very young kids for the very first time ever being able to have access to the vaccine with their parents. That, of course, puts a big, big decision in the hands of parents. So starting this week, that vaccine for kids as young as six months old will be available in thousands of clinics and hospitals around the country, again, including right here in New York City and the Bronx. If you are interested in getting your very young kids vaccinated against COVID-19, just make sure you call ahead of time to those clinics and hospitals to make sure that they do have those vaccines for kids in stock. Kaidi, back to you. All right. Thank you for that, Steve. Well, the city of New York has sent a letter to unvaccinated city workers, giving them the chance to get their jobs back if they're vaccinated by June 30th. Mayor Adams press secretary says the goal has always been vaccination, not termination. He says he hopes these workers will join the more than 97 percent who are already vaccinated, but that no one can resume work or return to the city payroll until they are fully vaccinated. Well, a person originally reported as missing after yesterday's fire in Queens has now been found dead. This is the third person killed by that fire that burned through five homes in Ozone Park yesterday afternoon. Officials say yesterday's intense heat and wind played a big part in keeping firefighters from getting that blaze under control quickly. Strong wind gusts blew the fire from one side of the street to the other, igniting the roof in an attic of a house on the opposite side of the street. Several firefighters were injured and several families displaced. The cause remains under investigation. And three people were injured in a fire at a house in Bed-Stuy. This happened this morning just before 1030. It started on the first floor of the home before spreading to the second floor and two adjoining buildings. One person was seriously injured but is stable tonight. Two firefighters were also taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Police are searching for two men involved in a drive-by shooting in the Bronx, and it was all caught on camera. Look at it here. This happened Thursday just around 7. You can see several people standing in front of a building on Wales Avenue when a motorcycle with two people pulls up and the man riding on the back opens fire right there. The 28-year-old man was hit in the leg. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. If you recognize these guys on the motorcycle, call Crime Stoppers with the number on your screen. In Brooklyn, a teenager is dead after police say he lost control of the vehicle he was driving on the Belt Parkway early this morning. The crash happened at 2 a.m. Police say the 16-year-old from Arizona was speeding when he clipped a car, hit another vehicle, and then flipped off the highway onto the roadway below. The teen was ejected from his vehicle and pronounced dead at the hospital. His four passengers suffered minor injuries. The people in the other two cars, they were also hurt, but they are expected to be okay. 
New video being released tonight as the NYPD searches for two people who stole a purse filled with $25,000 in cash. This happened Thursday afternoon in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. Police say a 41-year-old woman was sitting in her car when a man walked up to her and said her car had been clipped by another vehicle. Well, she got out to see if there was any damage. That's when a woman opened the back passenger side door and grabbed a purse belonging to the victim's 78-year-old mother, and it contained the $25,000 in cash. Both suspects took off. If you recognize them, call Crime Stoppers. Tonight, service at LaGuardia Airport is almost back to normal after hundreds of flights, hundreds, were canceled on Thursday and Friday. According to the flight tracking site FlightAware.com, 34 flights, or about 10 percent, were canceled today compared to more than a third on Thursday and 19 percent on Friday. JFK and Newark saw significant improvements today as well. The rest of the country saw thousands and thousands of delays and cancellations over the last couple of days. U.S. airlines are trying to recover from severe storms and staff shortages while also working to accommodate the growing number of travelers during the summer vacation. Nice start to the Father's Day weekend. Let's send it over now to Stacey Ann Gooden. Really going to be nice tomorrow, right, Stacey Ann? Yes, tomorrow you got Father's Day. We got Juneteenth. We observed Juneteenth as well on Monday. The weather is shaping up nicely, though cooler than normal. 75 at Central Park. That's where we topped out. A far cry from the normal high of 81, which is where we landed at LaGuardia. So upper 70s, low 80s across the board. Right now, temperatures have cooled off. As a matter of fact, those highs were met early, just past midnight. It's been tumbling ever since. We're starting to see the sky clear out, though. 50s mainly. Further inland, even colder tonight. This is going to be a night where you need the jacket if you're heading out. You may even need the extra blanket if you're inside. Give the AC a break. Take a look at the 24-hour temperature difference there. 19 degrees colder this time versus this time last night. Look at our lows for tonight, near record lows. We could even meet that on uh, LaGuardia. 55 is the forecasted low. The record is 56, so we'll update you accordingly tomorrow. Tomorrow's forecast, we're going to be in the upper 60s, low 70s, Newburgh 68. This is like light sweater weather and T-shirt weather otherwise, but... Here's a look at why we're stuck in this pattern. We refer to it as an omega block. It's pretty darn windy, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Stacey Ann. Early voting is currently underway in New York for the primary elections. Polls opened at 6 a.m. today. Early voting runs through June 26. Primary election day is Tuesday, June 28th. The June primary gives registered Republicans and Democrats a chance to vote for statewide offices such as governor. Governor Kathy Hochul is the overwhelming favorite to be the Democratic nominee as she seeks a full term. Well, in addition to Father's Day, as Stacey Ann said, tomorrow is Juneteenth. But New Yorkers have already started celebrating. The holiday became officially recognized last year by President Biden and commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. Photojournalist Russell Midori takes us to Battery Park, where music filled the air and children painted and rode horses as they learned about the history of black Americans on the frontier west and the eventual end of slavery. Wow. Wonderful music. The Queen's 10K returned to Flushing Meadows Corona Park for the first time since 2019. Thousands of runners took part in the third race in the New York Roadrunners Five Borough Series. We talked to one father-son duo who ran that race together. This is uh, the park where my parents used to take me as a kid, and I would run and play, and it's great now, like close to Father's Day, to be able to run with my own son in the same park. And uh, to do this race, uh, it, means, it means a lot. Ugandan-born Harbert Okudi, a resident of Sleepy Hollow, New York, came in first place, finishing in just 30 minutes and six seconds. All right, still to come, Bronx Pride brought together thousands of New Yorkers today. After this, we're taking you to the sights and sounds of that festival. Plus, the Mermaid Parade in Coney Island is back in full swing after a three-year hiatus. Up next, you'll see what makes this iconic event so unusual. Get more out of your mornings with Dan Manarino. I mean, that just wakes you up. Hazel Sanchez. I'm feeling it. And meteorologist Byron Miranda. Now an hour earlier at 6 a.m. There you go. We get excited. Weekdays on the PIX11 Morning News. Yankees baseball is back. And PIX11 is your home for an inside look at the Bronx Bombers. Get game analysis, player interviews, and a look at upcoming games.
Yankees Nation, Sunday nights at 11.30 on Pix11, New York's very own. Pix11 News, sponsored by Toyota's hybrid lineup. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. It was an exciting, colorful, and musical day in the Bronx as they celebrated the LGBTQ community. The Bronx Pride Festival brought entertainment and fun to tens of thousands of people today. Pixlema Steve Couge was there. All right, thanks for that, McGee. You can count on the Mermaid Parade to be over the top, right, Stacey Ann? I yeah. mean, that's what it's all about. Like that song, we love over the top, for yes. sure. And I love how much fun she was having. I mean, finally, right? It was out of uh, service because of the COVID situation, but now things are getting back to where they should be. Temperatures are going to be slow to get back to where they should be. We're in the 60s right now, 62 Brooklyn, 54 Islip, 54 West Hampton. And notice we do have some rain. That's courtesy of a trough along with that low pressure system that we talked about. Further east, actually it's centered just north of Maine. 59 Newburgh, the sky will be clearing out overnight. And that UV index, boy, is it high. And the summer solstice begins 513 on Tuesday. The longest amount of daylight. We'll talk more about that summer solstice, but wanted to leave you with your seven day. We do have some storm chances too. Tuesday and then later on in the week. More on that too coming up, Katie. All right, sounds good. Looking forward. Thank you, Stacey Ann. A young Brooklyn man who was adopted from China has gone viral on TikTok after sharing his story. Up next, you'll hear from him and his two dads. If you want an insider's look at the current real estate market, tune in Saturdays at 1030 a.m. for At Home in the Tri-State Area. You'll see the newest local properties for sale and a whole lot more. At Home in the Tri-State Area, Saturdays at 1030 a.m. right here on New York's very own PIX11. Get your game on now. The Amazons continue the fight against the Marlins. Oh, the Mets are fishing for another win against Miami. Mets, Marlins, tomorrow at 1.30 on PIX11, New York's very own. A young Brooklyn man born in China is going viral on TikTok after sharing his adoption story about growing up with two dads. Pixlum is Michelle Ross spoke to Ben Smith and his dads and shares the family story. June Juneteenth is tomorrow and celebrated Monday, and corporations are celebrating by selling all kinds of merchandise. We'll tell you why this is sparking criticism online. Plus, public school funding could be slashed in New York City. How parents are trying to fight this. You're watching the PIX11 News at 10. Parents and students at New York City public schools are outraged and concerned about a massive budget cut approved recently, and they're fighting back. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Katie Tong. The city says the cut is because of dwindling enrollment, but parents say the smaller enrollments are a result of low-quality education, and the cuts will just make it even worse. PIX11 is James Ford reports. Well, in a few weeks, you have more options for getting around town. New York City's e-scooter share program is expanding in the Bronx. You have to sign up with an app, then you can unlock your e-scooter, ride, and park. Ridership has been increasing, especially with higher gas prices, but neighbors say they're concerned about the parking because most of the time, they say the e-scooters are parked on the sidewalk or just scattered everywhere. I've looked around and see them here and there in different spots that are uh were left there and uh, abandoned. The City Department of Transportation says they've been meeting with community boards and responding to neighborhood concerns. Some elected leaders and business groups in the Bronx have also asked for better control measures. The city has created more mandatory zones where parking has to be centralized. The scooter companies have also stepped up ways to educate riders about e-scooter etiquette. Time now for your Strictly Business Report. Bitcoin drops below $20,000 as crypto sell-off quickens. This is the first time Bitcoin has fallen below that threshold since November 2020. The price of the most popular cryptocurrency has plunged nearly 10 percent. At some points during the day, it was below $18,000. After reaching highs of nearly $70,000, analysts predicted that Bitcoin would never fall below the $20,000 mark. Bitcoin has now lost more than 70 percent of its value since reaching its peak. Retailers have been quick to commemorate Juneteenth with an avalanche of merchandise from T-shirts to party cups to ice cream. 
but many of them are facing backlash on social media. Critics say the way they're marketing Juneteenth undermines the day, which is designated as a federal holiday last year to honor the emancipation of enslaved African Americans. Experts say that if retailers and other marketers plan to recognize Juneteenth, they should either sell merchandise from black-owned businesses or invest in campaigns that would help black communities. And that was your Strictly Business Report. Wow, what a big drop in temperature between <laughs> yesterday and today. About 20 degrees, Stacey Ann. It yeah, was just about. Dramatic. We, we looked at that 24-hour temperature change. You saw it, like 15 to like 20 degrees colder now versus yesterday. Yeah. And for the Juneteenth festivities, it's going to be great. There's so many events happening across the uh, tri-state, especially across the city. 75 is where we topped out. Unseasonably cool for this time of year. We should be at 81. But, you know, increasing daylight hours. Yeah, we're approaching summer solstice, which officially arrives, by the way, Tuesday, 513. And, of course, uh, the low, near normal. In terms of temperatures overall, the average temperature is 71. So we're not too far off when we crunch all the numbers. Eastern end of Long Island, parts of Connecticut still seeing some showers at northerly wind flow. Right now, upper 50s, low 60s. For the overnight, it's going to feel really cold. In fact, the Burbs, 42 to 48. A uh, friend to the show, Jerry in New Jersey, is like, it's cold, I need a sweater. <laughs> yes, you're going to need a jacket if you're heading out. You need the extra blankets if you're going to be sleeping in. 74, plenty of sunshine, breezy conditions. And that's another reason why we've been seeing or feeling those gusty winds, because of the difference in pressure systems we have, the high versus the low duking it out. We'll relax those winds. Temperatures will stay pretty cool tomorrow. 70, 64 in Liberty. Wall to wall sunshine, though. We'll have some cloud cover across the eastern end of Long Island, but mostly sunny otherwise throughout Long Island. Patchogue, Seaford, 74 degrees, a little bit cooler further north. Another high will be developing. That's going to keep us nice and dry. But by Tuesday, a few showers will be in the mix, and then we'll clear out. You'll need the umbrellas, though, throughout a good part of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even late Friday into Saturday. Kaidi will send it to you. Okay, Stacey, and thanks for that. Time now to send things over to Joe Masseri for a look at what's coming up in sports. Hey there, Joe. Hey there, Kaidi. Another day, another clean sweep for New York baseball. The Mets and Yankees continue to impress on the diamond. The highlights coming up in sports. Great to be here with you. Start your weekend mornings with more news. Join Craig Treadway, Kirsten Cole, and welcoming meteorologist Star Harvey on New York's very own PIX11 Morning News Weekends. As New York Republicans prepare to pick their candidate for the next governor, PIX11's Diana Harry goes one-on-one -on -one with each of these political hopefuls. Hear their views on the issues New York voters are most concerned about. The 2022 New York Race for Governor, Tuesday night at 7, only on PIX11, your local election headquarters. Well, it may only be June, but the Yankee train continues to motor down the track and it's leaving the rest of the AL East in the dust. This afternoon in Toronto, they clinched yet another series win, keeping their winning streak alive. Well, when we come back, many Knicks fans hoping he ends up playing at the Garden. But first, Donovan Mitchell is going to camp up in Connecticut. The story after the break. Yankees baseball is back, and PIX11 is your home for an inside look at the Bronx Bombers. Get game analysis, player interviews, and a look at upcoming games. Yankees Nation, Sunday nights at 11.30 on PIX11, New York's very own. Hey, America, it's Adrian Bankert. I am so excited to wake up with you, have coffee with you, but if you need an earlier start, I totally get it. I've got just the guy for you. Hey, Mitch. Hey, Adrian, and hello, America. I'm Mitch Carr. Join me at 6 a.m., 5 a.m. Central for early morning. And you can still stay tuned for Morning in America with me, Adrian Bankert, at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, 6 Central. Early morning starts June 27th at 6, 5 Central only on News Nation. You're going to need this. Mm, you can say that again. Get more out of your mornings with Dan Manarino. I mean, that just wakes you up. Hazel Sanchez. I'm feeling it. And meteorologist Byron Miranda. Now an hour earlier at 6 a.m. There you go. We get excited. <laughs> Weekdays on the PIX11 Morning News. Well, he's been known to take fellow NBA players to school on the court. But this week, Donovan Mitchell is at the Greenwich Country Day School up in Connecticut for his annual basketball camp with kids. And one check of the Stanley Cup Finals right now. The Avalanche lead 7-0 late in the third period. Katie. Joe, thank you.
All right, when we come back, Stacey Ann has one last check of the forecast. Plus, meet the legendary choreographer who helps stars feel comfortable performing new moves on the Broadway stage. It's the longest running American musical in Broadway history, and Chicago has seen its share of stars in the lead roles, some who have never done musical theater before. So how do they get so comfy? Big Slam is Craig Treadway met with the man who helps all of them soar on stage. Take a look. Oh my goodness. Well, that was a great, great story. Really great. Um, that was Craig Treadway, of course, reporting, doing those moves. Yes. Chicago, I know, it's still playing at the Ambassador Theater. You've got to check it out. Stacey Ann, you oh, could do it. I'm <laughs> impressed. You talk I'm, about impressed. I'm impressed and inspired after seeing that. Yeah, I can do me that. too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, take a look at these temperatures. Near record lows. We may even meet some records at LaGuardia. We'll, we'll see how things go. And the cool down continues. Tomorrow will be cooler than normal with temperatures. Temperatures topping out at around 74. Juneteenth, we celebrate Sunday, and also it's being observed on Monday. We got cooler conditions near normal for your Monday, but then we're tracking some shower storms potentially for your Tuesday, mainly early in the day. More humidity creeps back in the latter half of the week, and a gradual bump up will be slightly below normal for your Wednesday, finally getting to where we should be. Thursday, Friday, but I'll hang on tight to those umbrellas as you make your way throughout your day, Thursday as well as late Friday. Back over to you, Guidi. Thanks, Stacey. And finally tonight, a Bronx family taking the lead and making a difference one block at a time. The Guerino family organized a cleanup day for two blocks and four to matter. Volunteers removed graffiti, cleaned up trash, local businesses donated the paint to cover the vandalism. The group also coordinated with the police precinct and sanitation department to have street sweeping crews on hand to help. Organizers say it is about building relationships and neighborhood pride. Officers from the 52nd Precinct also met with community members to discuss their concerns and suggestions about quality of life in the neighborhood. And that does it for us on the Pix 11 News at 10. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow, okay? Get your game on now. The Amazons continue to fight against the Marlins. Mets, Marlins, tomorrow at 1.30 on Pix11, New York's very own.